come in from left field uh, about the lungs um, and for the effect to be so catastrophic. Um, that was very hard to, to adjust to actually. It affects, you know, it's not just my capacity to talk and breathe and stuff, but that wears me out. So I don't have very much energy. There's a kind of built-in cycle in the, in the system, which makes it, um, you know, I'm learning. Hopefully I'll learn enough to move things forward. And if I don't, well, you know, there's another side to it, which is that, in fact, I have had a very fortunate life in all sorts of ways, you know. I've worked in some of the best places in the world um, and with some of the best people in the world and travelled extensively, um, etc, etc, etc. I was diagnosed with with lymphoma. I had a chemo which went on for four and a bit months, um, at the end of which uh, the uh, PET scan said, all clear. This had been a battle that was definitely um, worth engaging in and it looked as if we'd won. The first phase was exhilarating and I was about to go to Europe for two months, a week before I'm uh, due to sit on the plane. I noticed there's a, a, just a little lump on my neck here and they found some uh, lymphoma cells. So two days before I was headed for Europe, I had to cancel everything. So then there was discussion about where from here, because I had been basically a fairly fit person, they harvest your stem cells and then at a key point they pump them back into you. The chemo that you're getting at that middle point um, is aimed to try and kill the cancer dead. That all seemed to go quite well, I mean it was horrible but you know, however a side effect which hadn't been looked for was that um, something went wrong with the interaction between the chemo um, and my lungs. I had lost 50% of my lung capacity. But as it turned out, that was the least of it because it kept on going. I have almost no conventional function at all and I'm sure you can tell from the way I breathe. Um, so I can't, for example, of my own free will, go to the loo or, or walk across to a chair. Um, I'm completely in the hands of the carers um, at this point in time. Um, I found it uh, quite confronting in a funny way to come here. Um, it's a lovely place. The people are fantastic. Uh, you get really good care. But finding myself so totally dependent on other people to do things for me, I find, um, I found particularly difficult the first week or so. Making those kinds of adjustments when you've been so used to most of your life to doing things for yourself by your own decision in a certain sense. Um, takes a fair bit of adaptation. I felt very isolated. I didn't, I had no idea what this place was like. I'd never been here before. It wasn't until the end of the first week I was here that Claire actually s stuck me in a wheelchair and wheeled me around and showed me what the place was like, at least from the inside. Um, and that was really nice. That, it sounds trivial, but it was a transforming experience in a funny kind of way. Being grabbed by David, that was significant for me um, because it was completely unlooked for. Um, and uh, not just having that facility, but, but someone like that who is encouraging me to, to play this sort of game and, and um, 
as I said, I think this morning, it's really good. It feels good for me, let's put it that way, um, that I can start to get myself involved in an activity which is different from the sorts of things that I've been used to. I literally haven't painted for 40 years. I used to paint before I came to Australia 40 years ago uh, in Edinburgh and then I gave it away and didn't touch it for a variety of reasons. So this is all an extraordinary experience for me actually. The hope that maybe I can get into something that <coughs> I can recover after all these years. Um, I um, hugely enjoyed it when I did do it 40 years ago. Um, it's a different kind of expression.